Today is day two of Occupy Los Angeles. This is Inside Out News. Occupy LA! Occupy LA! All week, all day! All week, all day! Occupy LA! Occupy LA! All week, all day! All week, all day! Occupy LA! Occupy LA! We'd like to start off today's broadcast by making a correction. Last night I reported that I did not see any media, any major media at the event. While I did not see any national media or any cable news network here at the event, there were a couple of local news stations here. In particular, uh, the local Fox News channel, the local Fox channel, Channel 11 was here. They did a report this morning. Um, when I was leaving the, uh, the event last night, I did see a KTLA van, which is Channel 5, and a Channel 7 van. I do not know whether or not they interviewed any people. I did ask uh, one of the protesters if they had seen any of the media. They had said they did see some of the vans, but that they were unaware of any reporters coming out in amongst the protesters and conducting interviews. Tonight at 8 o'clock, as I was setting up to do my broadcast, I did in fact see a reporter from Channel 9 News. Uh, I do not know if they are planning to interview anyone, but um, I, I'll see if I can catch the broadcast and I'll report back and let you know if in fact they are interviewing protesters. But I did at least see a reporter with a cameraman from Channel 9 News tonight. So there is some media here, albeit it's, it's strictly local to the Los Angeles area. There is, I, I have not seen CNN, I have not seen MSNBC, MSNBC, I have not seen Fox News, I have not seen uh, HLN, none of those. Only uh, a mild interest from the local media. Last night was the first night of the sleepover for the occupiers here at the rally. About, there's about 20 to 25 tents here at, on the City Hall Park. Last night they were required to move off the park at 10, a, at 10 p.m. and set up their tents on the sidewalk to obey the city rules in regards to parks. So in the city of Los Angeles, the parks close at 10 p.m. So to, so to avoid any confrontation with the police, the protesters agreed to move off of the park onto the surrounding perimeter sidewalk and sleep there. At 6 a.m. they were allowed back onto the park and now the tents are back uh, on the grass as you see in some of the clips that we're playing right now. Um, it's difficult to say exactly how many protesters spent the night in the park. I, I tried to uh, secure an interview with one of the PR people from the core members who are organizing Occupy Los Angeles. However, uh, they seem to be a little preoccupied with uh, preparing uh, smaller groups, uh, uh, what they're going to be doing over the week. So hopefully I will be able to secure an interview with one of the core members so that we can get some stronger numbers. But based on my estimate, based on the number of tents that are here, there can be anywhere from 40 to 110 protesters sleeping overnight. Uh, there, there were about 100 to 200 protesters here today. Certainly not as many protesters as there were yesterday. Yesterday there was anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 protesters. I believe the organization has the, the organization that is uh, organizing Occupy Los Angeles put out that there was about 2,000 protesters here yesterday at the peak. Today there was nothing near 2,000. Uh, but, but despite that they're not being near 1,000 protesters here, the protesters that were here have been here all day and have consistently been here. Earlier in the day, the protesters broke up into smaller groups and marched around downtown LA to spread the message. This was their form of outreach. So small groups traveled uh, through, you know, um, towards the west side, towards the east side, uh, and so on, with protest signs, chanting, slogans, trying to get their message across to the, the citizens of the city. 
There was one group today that went into the subway system. There is a subway stop very near the city hall called Civic Center. Civic Center is the stop on the red line and the purple line coming out of Union Station. About 40 protesters marched to Civic Center this afternoon and rode on the red line from Civic Center to North Hollywood. Their mission was to pass out flyers, answer questions. It, again, it was a type of outreach to bring the public, to, to create public awareness of what they're doing, to increase their numbers, to keep the ranks filled. I, I learned from one of the smaller groups today uh, that, was, uh, that was organized around discussing police brutality that there was some sort of altercation at the Civic Center. However, uh, according to one of the protesters that I spoke to who was in the protest that went into the Civic Center, that went on the subway, um, the, this altercation that occurred was only uh, between a very small fraction of the group, about five to seven at the most uh, of, the, of the group that went into the subway uh, decided that they were going to not uh, observe the the rule that was set by the by the Occupy LA people that they would do a silent protest. So they began chanting uh, very loudly and stomping their feet very loudly. I was told by one of the protesters that one of them even went so far as to yell in the ear of a police officer. However, she made it clear that they had let the police officers know that they were not associated with these people and that they wanted to be on good standing and obey the laws that were set. Uh, I, I can say this, um, I, was, I, I was present for part of this meeting, this subgroup that was talking about police brutality and there were a set of people there who indeed said that they did not like the police and that they essentially were not going to respect the police. However, on that same note, uh, there were also other people there expressing that they believe that the police were part of the 99%, that they are part of the 99%, and while their badge may not be part of the 99%, the person behind the badge is. So I, I think it is important to note that while there is a small faction uh, at the protest that do not agree with, with treating the police with respect, that the majority and that the overall consensus of the protesters here is to work with the police officers. Uh, I think this is significant to note because we have continued to hear reports out of New York that protesters are being arrested. Last night somewhere anywhere from around 300 to, to 700 protesters has been reported were arrested on the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, according to the Huffington Post, the protesters were told by the police that if they walked on the streets, it would be easier than walking on the sidewalks. And once the protesters made it to the streets, that they were arrested for obstruction of traffic. So I, I think that the I think that it's important to note this because I get the feeling that the protesters here want to avoid having that kind of thing happen. So while there was this minor altercation. Um, I, I really think that the protesters overall do not want to have a run in with the police, that they want to work with them, that they want to continue having a, an open communication with them. And in terms of police presence here right now and throughout the day, there has been very little police presence. Uh, in fact, I, I didn't see any police today. Uh, I have not walked around the perimeter of the city hall, but just on the grass there are no police officers. There, I've, no, I've not seen a police officer walk on the grass. I've not seen them come up to any of the protesters. I, I've not seen that at all. That doesn't mean that there aren't police here undercover. Uh, there very, very well may be. But in terms of uniformed police officers, I have seen none. I, I think it's important to raise the question, however, um, as to whether or not the, the lack of police presence reflects the, the, the city not taking the protesters seriously. Does the city see the protesters as a threat? Again, this is only day two of Occupy Los Angeles and it is Sunday. Tomorrow will be Monday, the third day of Occupy Los Angeles and Monday is the first day of the work week. So 
we will see when, when, when the city fills up with uh, people trying to get to work, we will see if, if the protesters are, are, will be viewed as a threat because they will be here still at City Hall. People will be trying to get into City Hall to work. People will be trying to get into the courthouse to work. In front of me is the LA Police Department. Uh, Water and Power is just a block up there. From here we can see the Walt Disney Hall. So people, uh, thousands more people will be on these streets. These streets will be crowded with cars. So uh, we, we have yet to see whether or not this uh, good relationship with the police will last once the city resumes business. Uh, people may not be aware of the way downtown Los Angeles works. Unlike New York City, which is constantly populated weekdays and weekends, all day, all night, downtown LA does not really house people. It is mostly buildings. So once business shuts down, generally people do not uh, come through this part of town. So uh, we'll see as the week progresses whether or not the police presence will increase and whether or not the protesters will be seen as a threat, whether they will be seen obstructing, ob obstructing business. Uh, until then, for now, it's, it's a, there's a good feeling amongst the protesters and the police. Earlier today, I had the opportunity to interview some more protesters. Today, I, I asked them what they thought the protesters could do to affect change in the country, whether or not they needed to take the step further from just occupying uh, a part of the city. Uh, here's what they had to say about that. Give uh, clear demands, maybe uh, ending corporate personhood and um, also um, mm, showing that corporations have to pay uh, or even the rich have to pay a larger sum of taxes to make this um, this world more livable. Lo que este país tiene mucha falta de información. Mientras esto está sucediendo, que ya pasó en Wall Street, ni una cadena de televisión. Wall Street lleva más de una semana eh, llena de pueblo y no las cadenas de televisión no informan eso. ¿Sabe qué sucede? Así tienen desinformado a todo este pueblo. Dicen que hay libertad de expresión, no hay libertad de expresión, porque los medios de comunicación masiva no son masivos, son privados. Por tanto, las masas, que son el pueblo, no están informados de la verdad. Y lo primero que, hay que, suceder, que tiene que suceder es que estas masas tienen que educarse e informarse cómo es posible que en un país un doctor trabaje si, y una persona pueda ir a un hospital sin pagar un servicio médico y que un, do, un doctor reciba un salario igual que un maestro, que un doctor reciba un salario igual que la persona que va a hacer un servicio en un McDonald's. We need to create a society and a political system that is sustainable, that thinks long term about the impacts of its decisions. We need to look at the worst case scenarios. The worst case scenario of a wind farm versus oil drilling, right? We see oil spills. So we need to create a system that it's not more expensive to eat healthy. Polluting should not be cheap, but it's cheap right now because we don't factor in what it costs on the well-being of the whole, the people, the environment, and the long-term viability of our, of our country. I also had an opportunity to ask some of the protesters uh, what they thought Obama needed to do to uh, help to satisfy the protesters' demands or, or to, to improve the quality of life in the nation. I, I asked them if they thought Obama was doing enough and here's what some of the people had to say. Do you think uh, that Obama is doing enough for the people of the United States in regards to um, corporate influence in politics? No, I do not. What do you think he should do? Um, I think, first of all, Citizens United needs to be repealed. That was an incredible step backwards in, uh, the influence, in terms of the influence of corporations in politics. Of course, that's not Obama's doing, it's the Roberts Court, but still. Um, I think that uh, the Glass-Steagall Act needs to come back 
because um, we had a fine period of bank regulation and the entire deregulation experiment has been conclusively shown to be false or has excuse me to have failed the average uh, American people um, and I think that there needs to be an actual reckoning um, of all the bankers uh, whose uh, fraudulent activities caused uh, the financial crisis um, these are known it's known who they are and you know, right now, uh, there is there are uh, movements across all the 50 states to grant the bankers um, immunity from the prosecution. So obviously, that can't be allowed to happen, and these people must be prosecuted. What do you think? Uh, what do you think Obama can do to satisfy the protesters uh, in Wall Street here in Los Angeles, here across the nation? What do you think he can do? to uh, get people to feel like they don't need to come out here in Canada? Well, I think some of the things that people here would like to see him do is really crack down on the banks in terms of regulation, uh, see the stimulus money goes directly to the people and not to the banks because we've, we've seen what happened with the stimulus money. They gave themselves bonuses, they bought out the companies, they sat on it. And, and very little of it has trickled down to us. I don't think, frankly, that Obama is in a position to do make the fundamental kind of changes that we really need to, to make a difference, though. Who do you think is in the, the position to make this change? Huh? Who do you think is in the position to make the change? The people. The people united. So you guys think that um, your protesting is actually uh, going to help Obama's uh, ability to help you? Um, I think it will. You know, I think one key element and one key point that Obama addresses is the need for us as individuals to kind of take action and to re reinvent ourselves and to, you know, be active in the whole process. You know, I think that's, that's one thing that we forget as Americans and as citizens of this country that, you know, we do indeed have the power and the ability to actually enact and promote change, you know whether it's on a, a personal level, a community level, or, or on a national level. And I think, you know, individually, you know, individually, if we empower ourselves, that can empower a collective audience. Totally, I agree. And I think that as long as we're all united and we're all looking and we're all sharing the same vision and the same goal, that's all that matters, really. And I think that change will come when we're all united. We still do not have a list of demands from the protesters. Uh, again, as I said, I was hoping to speak to somebody from the, organi from the core organizing group. Uh, there are several questions that I'd like to ask them. I'd like to know about their demands. I'd like to know why they decided to organize uh, the occupation here, what their, what their long-term goals are, what their short-term goals are, uh, things like that. Uh, unfortunately, again, I was unable to do this. Uh, hopefully tomorrow I will get those answers out for you, the viewer, and, and hopefully we will get some clarification of exactly what their demands are. Tomorrow uh, there will be events throughout the day. I, I've been told uh, that some things will be going on around 1 or 2 o'clock. There is a group of people called Occupy Celebs. That is their hashtag, I believe, on Twitter. They're looking to send celebrity figures to various occupations, including Occupation Los Angeles. So if there are any people from that organization, any notable figures from there, uh, we will try to secure some interviews with them. Aside from that, there are going to be other marches going on throughout the city. Answer LA is planning to hold some marches. And currently behind me, the General Assembly is going on right now. And I have heard them discuss whether or not they will be sending people to some of these events. So um, we will hopefully try to cover these events as they happen, or at least let you know what is happening throughout the week. It sounds like there's going to be a lot of different things happening. I do know that uh, on the anniversary of the Afghanistan war, uh, uh, Answer LA will be holding a a march at the Westwood Federal Building starting at 4 p.m. and that will be this Friday. So uh, that is something for the end of the week but I'm, I know that there are things going on uh, later on in the week something uh, a 
I believe it's called Trash uh, Banks, something like that. They will be marching to some of the local banks, some of the, the local branches of national banks. Uh, I've heard them uh, from the General Assembly, I've heard them say that they're hoping to maybe some of them will close their accounts while they're there. They're in protest, particularly Bank of America, they'd like to protest them. They'd like to protest uh, what what they're doing with their five dollar a month deb debit card uh, fee that the Bank of America is trying to impose. So that about wraps up our broadcast for tonight. We will hopefully see you again here tomorrow at City Hall in City Hall Park. This is Margot Pius signing off for Inside Out News. Thank you.